Masquerain is an extremely forgotten Pokemon. It's got pretty mediocre stats except for its base 100 special attack and 80 speed, but this thing definitely has some fun tricks. It's one of the very few Pokemon with access to Sticky Web, which halves the opponent's speed upon switching, but I like to run a more offensive threat Masquerain. This thing gets access to Quiver Dance, which boosts special attack, special defense, and speed by one stage. With its Intimidate ability, it can often switch into physical threats, which opens the door to setup. We start dancing, and before you know it, Masquerain's able to start sweeping with Stab Bug Buzz, Air Slash, and options for coverage with things like Hydro Pump. And in general, Masquerain's a super fun Pokemon that not a lot of people see coming. Alright, so look, Masquerain is not the most popular of Pokemon, but is it one of the strongest setup sweepers? Also no, and that makes for a perfect Pokemon that I like to highlight on my channel, and if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button, it's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it, and let's go ahead and get into our first match. Alright, so my opponent seems to be working with a sticky web team here, as of course they're going to lead off with the Galvantula, I decide to lead off with the Bearded Donut, and they have some big threats in the back, and sticky web is a little bit of a problem, and there's not really much that I can do about that. So, I do know, however, that they're going to go for that Sticky Web turn 1, and that's going to allow me to freely set up my Stealth Rock, which, you know, should be pretty nice. So, this Golem is working with the Sturdy ability, meaning I know that I can take any attack from this thing, and it probably has the coverage with Energy Ball, is what you see a lot of the time. So, I just decide to go for that Rock Slide. It turns out it's not going to be working with the coverage, as they decide to go for the Bug Buzz. So, Rock Slide, however, is just going to knock this thing down to Focus Sash, uh, which is unfortunate, it's pretty common what you see on like a lead Galvantula. But the good news is, I can probably take another Bug Buzz here. As long as that wasn't minimum damage and then they get a super high roll, they go for that next Bug Buzz and I actually live it with 6, which is actually amazing because not only can I finish them off with the Rock Slide, I now have some Super Golem shenanigans hidden deep within my boulder, and uh, that is our little Golem secret. So, they decide to switch into the Chinchino now. This thing is... It's definitely a problem. This thing can set up and be an absolute issue, so I'm just actually going to go ahead and click Explosion. Now, the good thing about getting knocked down to 6 HP, that puts us into Custap Berry range, baby, and we can go right for that free Explosion where we ordinarily wouldn't be faster, and we absolutely just demolish this little hamster over here, and that is going to take care of it. So, while we do lose Golem, I did, however, set up my Stealth Rock and take care of two Pokemon, and that's... Uh, that, that's what this golem's built to do. Ordinarily it gets knocked down to sturdy, but sometimes nature finds a way. So, now we have an empty battlefield, and what I like to do in this situation is bring out the squirrel. I'm gonna go into Pachirisu because I can I can limit whatever they want to go into with uh, a little nuzzle para. So, they decide to go into Backscalibur, and this thing is a massive threat. It is gonna be faster, of course. Because of that sticky web, it does take a little bit of that chip from the stealth rock, which is very helpful. Um, but I feel like this thing, looking at the squirrel, definitely wants to set up. If I know a Backscalibur, this thing is definitely, he's going to play with some swords. He does go for that swords dance here, and that is actually perfect. Because, while this thing is extremely scary, now I'm able to freely get a nuzzle here, and we get a nice little para. Slow your ass down and say, hey, hold on there, buddy. I'm going to need to see some license and registration for that shit. But, now that this thing is paralyzed, I'm actually faster, and I can also go for the Encore. That's going to lock this thing into the SD. I say, hey, I would say, actually, they look pretty sweet, and uh, I'm going to need you to go ahead and do that again. So, they actually, they get encored into the Swords Dance, end up getting, you know, obviously, uh, fully paralyzed there, which is honestly fine. I can now go for a U-turn, and for the next few turns, they're going to be stuck into going for that Swords Dance. So, I can now bring in whatever I like, and you know who I like is that boy Pinhead Larry. I'm going to end up going right into the Masquerade, as this is a perfect opening to try... Uh, and get this weird little dude going. So, I bring in Pinhead. I obviously get my Intimidate. It does have one Swords Dance up at this point. Um, and it also gets fully paralyzed once again. I mean, it's locked into Dancing with its Swords anyway, but it doesn't really matter. But what does matter is that now I am free in a great position to go right for a Quiver Dance. Now, the good thing about Masquerain is, of course, I don't touch the Sticky Webs. Being the flying type, here we fly right above them. And now we're just dancing right in front of this Backscalibur, just giving this dude a free show. It actually ends up getting three full paras in a row, and of course, it's always on times where it doesn't matter for me. It was locked into, you know, going for the sword Dance anyway. Um, the Encore does end at this point, so while I do get my free Quiver Dance, I, it's time to start making some moves, and we're gonna make some moves in the form of going directly for the Bug Terra. That's gonna hopefully give me enough damage to where I could not only knock this thing out with a Bug Buzz, now Masquerade should be like the scariest thing on either side, which is 
actually kind of hilarious. So I go for that Terra Bug Boosted Bug Buzz after the Quiver Dance, and that is going to take care of the Backscalibur. This little poor guy was an absolute victim. He came in, got hurt by Stealth Rock, <laughs> got paralyzed, stuck into Swords Dance, which meant, you know, forever paralysis, and now he's just chilling in hell. So they can now get a revenge switch into whatever they like, and they decide to go into the Cloister. Now, this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to set up the Stealth Rock early, is because a lot of the time, this thing's also working with like a Focus Sash, they can, you know, start to Shell Smash, and be very scary. They do not end up going for the priority Ice Shard, which actually uh, wouldn't be able to kill, but I just go for that Bug Buzz, and that just directly takes care of the Cloister. So that's a huge threat out of the way. We are taking some Life Orb Chip, but it's totally worth it to allow this thing to hit kind of at its max potential here, especially with that Quiver Dance. Not a lot wants to deal with, <laughs> with the crazy bug. So they actually decide to go into Tyranitar here. Now this thing is going to kick up the Sandstorm, which does boost this thing's uh, special defense here, being the Rock type. And I'm still feeling pretty confident that I should be able to knock this thing out with a Bug Buzz. However, they're going to decide to go for a Terra of their own. And... Uh, this thing is a little bit scary and now they're going to go for the Terra Flying. Now, what that's going to do is basically make it so they can guarantee a live from a Bug Buzz and potentially put this thing in a spot uh, where it can maybe take two. So I go for the Bug Buzz right onto the balloons and it is going to be able to knock it out in two hits. Also with a special defense drop, which is kind of unnecessary, they end up going for the Dragon Dance. They, uh, they want to turn this match around by going for a little bit of a re reverse sweep. However, with one Dragon Dance, I still have my Quiver Dance. We're both danced the hell up out here. Um, and without that special defense boost, you know, from the, the sand being a rock, not, no longer a rock type, it is not able to take two Bug Buzzes. And Pinhead Larry reigns supreme. I go for one more Bug Buzz here, and we are not getting reverse swept by a damn Tyranitar today. So they underestimated the power of the Masquerade being able to hit through uh, the, not, the not very effective Terra. And uh, we are in an amazing spot here. Sometimes all you need is a Masquerade in a dream, and uh, that's exactly in a, in a spot we're in here. So, I'm chilling at half HP. The good news is, however, they only have one more Pokemon, and it is going to be this Toucan. So, this little pissed off Toucan comes in, and uh, he is not going to enjoy taking an Air Slash at plus one with the Life Orb. That is going to knock Buddy out, and down goes the final Pokemon. So. That was a pretty ideal match for the, the Masquerade, not gonna lie. We out here just showing off the true potential of the greatest bug type alive. And that is gonna be the end of it. Uh, so that was a super fun match. And we love to see the Masquerade pulling out the impossible. So that leads us into our next game. By the way, just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder. If you are enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like. YouTube likes it when you click the button. I like it and it's a win-win situation. So. In the second match here, we have another very scary team we're going up against with uh, some setup potential, some solid speed, but we are not afraid, and I'm going to try to see if I can get the Masquerade going once again. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time, my opponent is going to be working with the Meowskarada lead, where, of course, I'm going to lead with the dedicated donuts, and I am here to blow up and act like I don't know nobody, where I'm actually kind of in a weird spot here. I, I, I know that the flower trick seems kind of obvious and I want to go for the counter just to try to get some huge damage after getting knocked down to sturdy on literally whatever comes in. However, they instead go for the U-turn. I'm also, you know, I was reluctant to click the Stealth Rock because of course they do have the Magic Bounce Espeon in the back. And it turns out they're actually just going to pivot right into the Garchomp where even though the, you know, U-turn doesn't do a whole lot of damage to me, I can actually get some solid chip with that counter, and now Garchomp is quite a bit less scary. Now, at this point, I'm kind of worried about this thing starting to set up. It's either like a Stealth Rock Garchomp, or it's gonna be like a setup, and I decide I'm just gonna go right into the Masquerade. It is, listen, it's pinhead time already because I can come in on the Intimidate, and not only that, I can actually dodge an Earthquake where we have some pretty good synergy with our Alolan Golem. So, we dodged the Earthquake nicely, and now I'm thinking, okay, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna go right for the Quiver Dance here. They actually end up switching out the Garchomp. I was very afraid of that thing having some type of rock coverage, but they're instead just gonna switch right into Espeon. So, I go for that Quiver Dance, get myself some nice boosts, and the reason why they go into Espeon here is because when people see Masquerade, a lot of the time they're expecting the uh, the Sticky Web. So that thing would have been able to bounce back my Sticky Web, but instead, now we push their ass up against the ropes because a Bug Buzz were able to outspeed does knock this thing down to a Focus Sash, which is unfortunate. However, I know that I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me just because of the fact we have that special defense boost 
from the Quiver Dance. So we take a Psychic actually quite nicely, which gives us a lot of health to work with in terms of taking some more Life Orb Chip. And the Masquerain is absolutely going burr at this point. We are, we're fully locked in. So they decide to save the Espeon for later. They're going to end up switching into Glamora, who does come in and take a Bug Buzz, where it's looking like they can definitely take one more of them. However, I feel like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and commit the Bug Terra. I call that the old extra damage button. And that's going to definitely give me enough to uh, be able to knock out the Glamora. So we're going full Bug Terra once again. No crazy Terras over here, just... Sometimes you gotta go for just the, the standard Terra just to get some extra damage, which Masquerain definitely appreciates some extra damage here. So we put the old antennas on, which gives us a nice little boost, and one more Bug Buzz is gonna take care of the Glamora. So we're actually we're in a pretty good spot here. You know, we've got the Espeon down to one. We're actually faster than pretty much everything they have at this point. And uh, the Life Orb is putting us on a little bit of a timer, but listen, Masquerain does not give a shit. So on the revenge switch, they decide to go into Blaziken. Now, this puts me in a very unique position where we're actually both the same speed tier at both base 80. And if I know anything about Blaziken, this thing is going to click protect here to try to get a speed boost, which can make it either speed tie or be faster than me. So predicting the protect, I'm going to go for a second quiver dance. And that, even though this thing has the speed boost ability, is going to give me just the upper hand on the speed once again. And we get the prediction correct because that's kind of their best play at that point was to try to get this thing faster. So now that we are going to be guaranteed faster, they can either roll for a second protect, but they do not. And they stay in and an air slash does take care of the Blaziken because you know we have the coverage out here. And that pays off super nicely for us because now... Masquerade has insane boost at this point, and uh, the only thing keeping us down is going to be our Life Orb. So, they are down to four Pokemon left. They decide to now go into Umbreon, who they're kind of just running out of options at this point, and I can easily just knock this thing out with the Bug Buzz. And I'll tell you what, boy, is it satisfying to, like, directly knock out an Umbreon, because that little asshole is always just making matches last way longer than they should. Uh, but we get a nice little one-hit KO there, and... They actually decide to bring in this thing's uh, sister, which is going to be the Espeon, of course. We know we are faster, as uh, we have two Quiver Dances, and this thing is an absolute bug nuke at this point. So I just go for a Bug Buzz, does finish off the Espeon, and uh, that is amazing. Now they're down to two Mons left, but there are some, they are some pretty big threats that they do have left. So with the Life Orb chip, we are going to end up knocking ourselves out, and uh, that is kind of unfortunate because you know we could finish off the rest of their squad but you know the life orb uh, is going to be able to stop that the good news is however i do have a lot of resources to work with to be able to knock out uh, the garchomp and the meowscarada they have left so i decided to switch into tentacruel here now the good thing about switching this in against garchomp is that i do still have my air balloon intact and i know that uh, obviously it can't earthquake me here but um, I'm kind of considering I don't think a liquidation is going to be able to knock this thing out um, And uh, as you're gonna see here. I do outspeed because I'm base 100. I'm fast as shit uh, However, the liquidation does not quite knock this thing out and they decide to go for the worst possible thing for us Which is gonna be the scale shot now the reason for that is because with the scale shot It is actually gonna give this thing a nice little plus one speed boost it pops my balloon to rain on my parade, and now I'm like, oh shit, this Garchomp is actually in a position here to where it could be very scary. But I do see a way out of this, and uh, I'm like, okay, all I gotta do is leave Tentacruel in. It can now freely Earthquake me because I no longer have my balloon. Party is over, and down goes the Tentacruel. If I had the Ice Beam coverage there, uh, it would have been pretty much GG at that point. But now, I have to figure out a way to get through this, and that is gonna come in the form of the priority with the quick attack that I have on Scyther. I'm running, listen, I'm running double bugs. I've got a special bug with Masquerain, I've got a physical bug with Scyther, and luckily I'm also working with the priority quick attack. So with the plus one speed, uh, the Garchomp is gonna be faster, but it ain't faster than these hands because the quick attack takes care of it. Uh, and of course we do take a little bit of rough skin damage, but that is totally fine to be avoiding the sweep there. So now their final Pokemon is going to be the Meowskarada. Now, I feel like this thing probably doesn't have anything that can knock me out here, but then I realize this thing did in fact get access to Triple Axel, and that definitely kills me, but I actually do avoid that, which is quite amazing because while this thing turns into the Ice type, it does live the X Scissor, but now I'm like, okay, well, you know, a uh, another one of these, if it connects, is definitely going to kill me, as Triple Axel is like an insane coverage move for this thing. I decided to just go for a last ditch quick attack, which doesn't quite knock this thing out, sadly. And they do now land the second Triple Axel. So, 
Uh, that is actually kind of bad. I no longer have any priority, and honestly, this Meowskarata is very low, but it's honest, it, it, it's a huge threat right now. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna go into Pachirisu just to scout a little bit. Now, the reason for that is because if they click Triple Axel again, that probably tells me that this thing is choiced. And I decided to go for the Nuzzle as they do Triple Axel, they do connect, and that is gonna take care of the Pachirisu. So the reason why you Triple Axel there is either you're choiced, or you're trying to bluff the fact that you're like choice scarf or choice band. So at this point, you know, if it is choice, it's stuck into the triple axle and Chandelure is going to be able to win. However, I'm going to end up going into Donut and I'm going to see for sure if this thing is choice. I obviously, you know, I do die to a triple axle here, but I really just want to click explosion where they do triple axle and they actually end up missing, which is insanely clutch for us because now I just fire off the old explosion, blow up on his ass, act like I don't know nobody and that is going to kill the Meowskarata. So, while that's an in extremely interesting end to the game there, unfortunate they missed two of their triple axles, which, again, it's a risky move to be clicking. But, down goes the Meowskarata, I keep the Chandelier in the back, and uh, that is going to be the end of the game. So, super close match where it kind of looked like things were going to go bad for me at the, at the end there. With a little bit of luck, we're able to pull through, and that is going to be the end of the game. So, thank you guys very much for watching, as always. I really do appreciate all the support. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.